Hi, my name is Margaret Posch. This is part two of the introduction to Java arrays. In part one, we talked about what arrays are and how you can access array elements. Now in part two, I'm going to show you how to declare and create arrays. So let's start with declaring a variable of an array type. It follows the same pattern that you used from any Java variable declaration. You have a type, you have a name, you have a semicolon. What is different is how you specify an array type. You do that by specifying the type of its elements followed by the rectangular brackets. You might notice that the word type and variable name are in italic. And the reason is because type and variable name have to be substituted with the actual type and the actual variable name. So let's look at some examples. I could have an integer array numbers. So my type is int bracket bracket. My variable name is numbers. I could have a string array names. My type would be string bracket bracket. My variable name is names. I could also use my self-defined types in an array. So I could have an array of type rectangle. I might call this array variable rectangles. You might have noticed that all my variable names were plural nouns. The reason is that arrays don't just include a single element but multiple elements. So it makes sense to have a plural name for array variables. Now once you have a variable declared, you also need to initialize it. And in order to initialize it, you need an instance to initialize it with. So let's talk about how to create an array object, how to create an array instance. Arrays are reference types, so we're going to use the new operator. But rather than having the familiar constructor call, we have a type followed by the rectangular brackets. And within the brackets, I specify the length, the number of elements in my array. So once again, type array length is in italic because that has to be substituted by the actual type and actual length of the array. I could create a new integer array with length three. This would be an integer array with three elements, indices zero to two. I could create a new string array of length five. The number of elements is specified in the array creation expression. Once an array has been created, the length can no longer be changed. So one thing that is important to remember, the length or the size of the array has nothing to do with the declaration of your array variable. The size of your array has everything to do with the instance you create. That's when you specify how big the array is, and once it is specified, it can never be changed. When you declare and initialize an array, you can do that in two steps or in a single step. So I could say I declare a variable of type integer array, I name my variable numbers, and then in a second step, I assign a new integer array of size 12 to my numbers. I could do the same thing in a single line, I could say I declare a variable called numbers of type integer array and I assign it a new integer array of size 12. So you can see the type is int bracket bracket, no size is specified in a type. The name of my variable is numbers, it's a plural name because arrays include more than one element. And then I have a array creation expression. This is when I create my new integer array. And this is the time when I specify how big it should be. Every time you create an array, 
it is automatically filled with the default value. For numeric primitive types, this would be zero. For Boolean elements, this would be false. For all reference types, this would be null. Let's have a look at another example. Here, I have a variable quiz results. It is of type double array and it is initialized with a new double array of size 7. So you can see I have all my elements initialized with the default value and I have indices ranging from 0 to 6 where 6 is the length of quiz results minus 1. Now I want to add some actual quiz results. So I say my element on index 0 should be 89.5, index 2 should be 94, and the value of the element on index 4 should be 92.5. So I'm going to look at my array again, and I can see the newly entered values. I want to point out that if the element type is a primitive type, the array elements include the actual value. So in our case, the element type is double because this is a double array and each array element includes the actual value. It can be the default value, zero. It can be the newly entered value, 89.5 or 94. Now let's look at a string array. It has the name names and it is initialized with a new string array of size 4. You can see the string array is initialized with null because string is a reference type and that is the default value. My indices range from 0 to names.length minus 1. And when I enter some actual names, let's say Tim on index 0, Mary on index 1, and Ben on index 2, then my array is going to reference the actual string objects. As a general rule, you can say that if the element type is a reference type, the elements include references to the actual objects. And with that, I conclude this introductory video to Java Arrays.